Which of you charming ladies is Blanche Hunch? Well, we've got a hunt, but we've got no hunches. Blanche, author of this exquisite letter. Mel Hutchright. Oh, I say. Mel Hutchright, as in grinding down. Hard grinding. I was mixing the experience of reading it. I wrote to him after we had that Barney over whether he were a man or a woman. And I'm here to reassure you that I am most definitely all man. I didn't think you'd reply. Uh, your agent said she'd cut all ties. Creative differences. Uh, so I tried your publisher and they said they don't work with you anymore. Hapless suits, money, 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 no souls. But uh, capable of forwarding correspondence. Uh, Sir, it's an honour. Uh, uh, welcome to our, uh, our humble little buck group. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, yes. Neighbourhood watch. How are you with window locks? The only locks I have any interest in are those which fall bounteously from many a fair maiden's head. Other locks restrict, restrain, bind. Our human duty is to be free. You can tell Mr. Spielberg the very foundation of the novel is its Lancashire identity, and setting it in Baltimore, it would suck and siphon the very lifeblood from it. It would be like E.T. being from Milton Keynes rather than out of space. You know, I don't care what he's offering, it's Lancashire or not. Oh, very good. Yes. Well, I take it he took the nout option then. Could you, uh, give me a glass of water? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Oh, um, unless you'd like something a little stronger. I mean, we could adjourn to our local hostelry, uh, allow us to buy you a drink, perhaps. Oh, Norris, you are the alpha <laughs> member of this group. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, over the years I've become attuned to identifying the roles fulfilled by members of uh, groups such as yours. Uh, Rita, if you'll forgive my forwardness, are the passion. passion. Betty, clearly the anchor. Well, I've been called worse. <laughs> Emily, if I'm not mistaken, the conscience. Oh, well. And my dear Blanche can only be the facilitator. Hence my presence here. Oh, and you, Kev. Can. Ah, uh, the pretender. Uh, the pretender. You know, every group has a member who considers himself equal, if not above, the literature he's engaging with. The relationship with the text, one of domination, <laughs> rather than immersion. Is that right? Look, are we going to go to the rowers or what? Only I was on shift half an hour ago. Look, can the anchor make decisions? Well, I, I would have thought it was the facilitator's job. Hardly. Come along, follow me. Come along, group. <laughs> and after several weeks in a small cabin on the Cornish cliffs, with only the sea and the gull for company, you begin to hear the soul of the place. Soul? Every rock holds within it its history, Rita. And the sea holds within it its history as well. And you've written about this. I am about to write it, Kev. But doesn't discussing it at length make it harder to sit down and write it? Have you ever written? Yeah, I have uh, journalistic experience. Oh, not just that, Kenneth. He still writes reviews, don't you? That upset the neighbours. Yes, <laughs> electing to criticise rather than create, to tear apart that which another's sweat has put together. By far the easier job, Kev. It's Ken. QED, one consonant out, and we're beating our chests and crying. The end of the world is nigh. Oh, Norris. <laughs> oh, I must be hence. Get my train, I'll be forced into B&B &B accommodation. Oh, no, no, you, you, you mustn't be hensing. It, 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 it could stay with us, couldn't he, Emily? Uh, well, yeah, I... Yes, 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 we'll be honoured. Look, I'll, uh, I'll just nip back home and uh, make up front room for you. <laughs> I don't want to overstay my welcome. Oh, no, 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 no nonsense, no. no. <laughs> Can I, uh, facilitate another drink for you? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, fail. What is he doing in there? He's trying to impress someone. Well, I hope she's worth it. It's a he. He's a writer called Mel Hutch Wright. Oh, never heard of him. Well, he wrote a book called Hard Grinding. <laughs> the story of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about the rigours and hardship of Lancashire life in the 19th century. Well, will you tell this fellow, if he wants to write about suffering, come round to our house for tea tonight. <laughs> I'll see you, Jack. I'll love to see you. Norris, come out of there before you do yourself a mischief. If you haven't found it... 500 pages of top-grade cotton watermark paper. The parchment of kings for a prince among writers. Well, I hope your prince doesn't turn out to be a pauper. That paper's expensive. Oh, no, no, it's a gift, Rita, from a, a fledgling writer to a master. They're coming oh, out your wages, then. Oh, imagine the, the words, the intellectual soarings that are going to appear on these very pages. The, the majesty of the language. I mean, words torn from the very... So oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Rita. I, I know, and I, I know what I sound like, but, but, but it's not every day you meet a kindred spirit. Mel? Norris. Didn't expect you back so soon. Oh. Skyping off work, are we? Nipping off early to a rendezvous with a bit of fluff you got tucked away. Surely I was doing no such thing. I, I wouldn't uh, dream of such an impropriety. I'll keep your britches on. I'm only joshing. Oh, yes, 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 of course. So there's nothing wrong with the occasional romp. Mm. Keeps the old cogs greased, if you know what I mean. Remember, a woman is the chalice of a man's creativity. Speaking of which, I feel the clarion call of inspiration. Oh, you, you, you've been needing this, then? Mm -hmm. Look, it, it, it's, it's the best we have. Uh, here, open it, feel the quality. Oh, no, I'm sure it's just fine, only I'm a bit short of money. Oh, no, no, please, please. It, mm -hmm. it, it's a gift. It's my meagre contribution to the Canary's last song. Well, as a rule, I find such bourgeois extravagance an anathema, but since it's you, my friend, I accept. I'm a simple man. The first thing I ever wrote was on butcher's paper. I would scratch in the dirt with my fingers if needs be. My words would still find their voice. Oh, I, I, I was wondering if, if you had a moment, if, if you could uh, help me find my voice. I mean, you, you, you did say you, you might be able to give me a tip or two, you know, a little nugget of wisdom, perhaps. Oh, the gold of knowledge, to comprehend its sublime luster. A man cannot just be offered such a thing, Norris. You must search for it in the seam of your soul. Mel, Mel, you, 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 you forgot your paper. Evening calls. <laughs> Is there a problem? No, 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 not at all. Mr. Hotchright. Call me Mel. It's about your smoking. Won't you join me for a drink? Well, it... It's a bit early. Oh, nonsense. Ernest Hemingway once said to me, it's never too early or late to libate. You knew Mr. Hemingway? Ernie and me. Oh. Now, that drink. Oh, we, 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 we'd love to. Oh, uh, Norris, you can do me a favour and, and locate certain items. Uh, For creative purposes, you understand? Uh, yes, 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 of course. Beautify yourself, Emily, and escort me to the pub. I require a muse. Huh. Mel Hutchrides at your service. Uh, why don't you join us? Don't mind if we do. Huh? Hello. Well, um, I'll get the drinks, shall I? Marvellous. Oh, you can feel it in your marrow. What, what are we supposed to be feeling? The beauty of an evening when the sun, like the working man, finds his rest. Oh, Audrey, I'd never thought of it like that. Well, that surprises me, Audrey. I sense the poet in you. 
Ah, uh, the critic returns after another day lambasting the poor and artistic. We're enjoying the evening. <laughs> I do believe it's wasted on the likes of Ken. I prefer the morning myself. Personally, I can't see it compares. Now in the palace, the west, sinking to slumber the bright day, like a tired monarch fanned to rest. Oh, do you know, that's wonderful. Did you write that yourself, Mel? No, Thomas More did. It's from The Summer Fate. Spoken like an autodidact. Where did you plagiarise that? Did you know Ken had written a book? Really? And does this masterpiece have a title? Yes, it's called Weatherfield Yesterday. It's about the history of the area. Non-fiction isn't writing, it's regurgitation. And as for history, it's the mere distillation of rumour. I suppose you'll be able to tell me who said that as well. If you'll excuse me. Oh, Ken, I'd love to borrow your book. I've been suffering from a touch of insomnia of late. It sounds like just the tonic. Don't you think you were a bit hard on him? Emily, use a critic and hence my worst enemy. Now, why don't we return to the snug? This delightful evening has given me a raging thirst. Oh, well, 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 I'm terribly sorry, but nobody round here had even heard of absent. Why am I not surprised? Plebs, one and all. They managed to get the cigars, though, and the extra strong lager. Oh, excellent. So, uh, let's have one quick snifter with the ladies uh, and then back to the grindstone. And what do I owe you? Oh, uh, the cigars were a lot. Uh, £12.45. What on earth was I thinking? A mentor doesn't offer something as vulgar as money. He offers wisdom, and you're going to get it, my friend. Try writing in the nude. It breaks down one's inhibitions. Morning. I don't care what they say about secularisation of supermarkets. There's still something special, isn't there, about a Sunday morning? I can't help feeling there's something distinctly Laurentian about you. Really? D.H. Lawrence. I am familiar with his work. The sensitive working class youth led out of his father's simple world by his grammar school education, destined for middle class, middle brow, mediocrity. And soon he discovers he doesn't fit in, there's a touch of the coal pit clings to him, so he goes back, looking for comfort in his old home. And what does he find? Doesn't fit in there either. He's neither fish nor fowl, doomed to forever straddle the classes, knowing he'll never belong to either one. You could call it tragic if it weren't so pathetic. Interesting. Really? No. I just said that to be polite. Show me your hands. You are. You can tell a lot about a man from his hands. So, yes. These are the hands of a working man. Four set of fingers and all. Not every butcher can say that. Do you know, I think I find what I've been looking for all these years. Pardon? My hero. Steady on, I say, steady on. A man whom women love and men admire. Beating heart of his community. The essence of working class masculinity. A man of quiet steel who, with the climax of my great novel, as the coal shaft creaks and cracks and starts to collapse, puts his massive shoulder against the black rock and becomes a human pit prop holding up the crust of the earth whilst his fellow colliers escape to safety. Does he get out alive? I'm afraid not. But in death, he becomes immortal. And, do you know, I've, I've been looking for a name for my hero, my underground Atlas. And now, I think I've found it. Fred Elliot. My name in a book? Oh, yes, if I may. My name? Immortalized as the hero of a great novel. Fred Elliot, a giant among men. Oh. Oh, let me get you a drink. A pint, is it? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, I prefer a brandy. Large brandy coming up. <laughs> uh, 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 
Can I help you? I couldn't help noticing these impressive tributes to the golden age of rail travel. It's a fine collection. It's, it's very kind. Uh, uh, most people mistake them for novelty decoration. Oh, no, I can see this has been assembled by a discerning eye and a sharp mind. Uh, well, thank you. I admire that. I could never aspire to such rigorous intellectual discipline. I am a storyteller. <laughs> See, I excite the reader with emotion. I have no time for research. No, no. Well, I'm not one to find fault, but I couldn't help but notice some glaring anachronisms in hard grinding. That's really well there, you see. For example, anyone with even a routine knowledge of industrial history would find it quite laughable. The, the way you leap back and forth in time with, with your depictions of the manufacturing processes. Do you know something, Ruston? I've been looking for someone like you. Really? Someone to hold my rampant imagination in check, to subject me to the rigors of scrupulous research, to bind my creativity to hard fact. When you accept the challenge, will you be my research assistant? Well, well, I, I thought, thought your new novel was about mining. I, I know very little about mining. Oh, no, there are trains in it. Lots of trains, lots of uh, journeys crisscrossing the country. And In fact, I, I, I see the train as a sort of recurring motif, a symbol of the new age. Yes, 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 in interesting thought, yes. So perhaps we should discuss it further over lunch. Uh, absolutely, yes. In that case, I'll have the full Sunday roast. <laughs> now, I seem to have forgotten to go to the cash point. I'm oh, sorry, no, you better cancel that. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's all right, yeah. Um, you have this one on the house. Oh, I say, that yeah. is very kind of you. <laughs> yes. And uh, um, extra gravy for me. I love gravy. Then, then cracks open up in roof in a minute, and brave Fred Elliot wedges himself in the shaft and holds up Are you tons sulking? of rock so that his fellow colleagues not sulking, thinking. Oh, right. well, what are you thinking right. about? <clears throat> Nothing. Have I upset you? Not really. Well, look, I may have an uncanny understanding of the workings of the human psyche, but I am not a mind reader. Fred Elliot. What's about him? I understand he's to be the Collier hero. Oh, he has a symbolic, functional role. And of course, he dies barely a third of the way into the book. Really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Totally squashed. I shall devote far more pages to Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole? The yeah. Mine Workers Union chief. Self taught man. He's a voracious reader and intellectual, and yet an indefatigable leader of men. Of course, the greedy mine owners, they tried to beat him down, but he fights fire with fire, and by the end of the book, he triumphs. And his victory is justice for all working men. Oh, and another pint, is it? You know, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> he still cuts a dash, don't he? You think so? Yes, for an old boy. Ever so distinguished. Oh, it's a disgrace. You know, the London literary scene wouldn't recognise the power of the imagination if it smacked them in the cerebral cortex. It's a conspiracy. I blame Melvin Bragg. The only critic I've any time for is German Greer, and she's a party crasher. Has, has Melvin started writing a column in Woman's Own, then? Oh, my apologies. I will pay for the oh, magazine. No, 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 I wouldn't dream of it. Uh, I'll see to it. What was in it to upset you? These people, they fail to realise that every book published by another is a knife in the very soul of someone like me, even though it's a penny dreadful whose concepts stretch no further than consumerism and coitus. There's no need to take it so personally, Mel. My dear, sweet Emily. It's the only way I can take it. Life is visceral, you know, it's immediate. You've got to feel it here. Or you might as well turn up your toes this instant. He does get himself worked up, doesn't he? Ah, you should have seen me when I was young. I was a firebrand, mellowed with the years. This is mellowed. <laughs> I'm a veritable pussycat these days, me oh. <laughs> Still got a set of claws, though. Audrey, you are the very woman I wish to see. Oh. 
I'm looking for advice on local hotels. Attention must be paid to the Hutch right locks. Well, look, I can give you a trim, love, eh? You're a lady's salon, surely. No, unisex, we're very modern. Uh, I, I, I go to Audrey's. Just give me half an hour and I can fit you in today. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Perfection. I've been dying to get my hands on your crowning glory. Looks like a real challenge. Not for someone as skilled as you, I'm oh. sure. <laughs> Hello. Audrey's expecting me. I'll try it. Author. Oh, right on time, Mel. Hello, Mel. Oh, Kenneth. Oh, is it you? Yes. Oh, you did give me a surprise. <laughs> Good to know. I can still surprise people. Oh, well, I told you it were unisex. Now, take a seat. Maria will settle you in. I'll be back in a mo. Yeah. Are you following me around? <laughs> <laughs> no, almost. No, I, I saw you coming in and I thought it'd be friendly to have mine done at the same time. Can you fit me in? What for? A quick polish? <laughs> oh, now, that's a very old line and boldness isn't nearly as funny. What, well, as it looks? <laughs> Can you fit me in or not? I'll have to go and check in my book. <laughs> right, Norris. Can do you at uh, one minute to two minutes past. That should be long enough, eh? <laughs> well, it's, it's very difficult to maintain a semblance of dignity in the modern world. Oh, banish your dignity, Norris, I have. Right, I'll do you after Ken. Go on. Ken's call it, it. This is you, is it not, Kenneth? It is. Yes. Uh, do you do this as a favour, or do they pay you money? They pay me. Really? For this? <laughs> the Queen's coin? Well, it's real money. Well, it is superficially impressive. It's like a dog walking on two legs. It's not done well, but one's amazed it's done at all. Oh, I'll take that as a compliment. It's such fascinating stuff. And will the council fix the cracked pavement? I can hardly wait for next week. Yes, well, it's important to the people involved. No. Oh. <laughs> Norris, come here quickly. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> He's used disinterested to mean uninterested, uh, when any slack-jawed fool knows it means impartial. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I've been typing like a demon all day. I'm surprised these fingers aren't dripping blood. Oh, I can vouch for that, I heard. And although a lot of what I wrote was good... I'm sure it was. <laughs> some would say very good. It wasn't perfect. So, I ripped it up and started again. You'd never get your column finished if you did that, would you, Ken? No, I don't suppose I would. And the world would be spared your many solecisms. Solecisms? Uh, does that mean wise words? No, it means grammatical errors. You knew that without looking it up in the dictionary. I am impressed, Kenneth. Don't tease him, Mel. <laughs> Thank you so very much for my haircut. Oh, no. Think nothing of it. Thank you, Bert, sir. Oh, but I do. I've got a great admiration for other craftsmen and craftswomen. No, I mean, it's, it's so well cut, you'd hardly know I'd had it done. <laughs> I'm glad you're pleased. And <clears throat> I hope you might allow me to repay you the dinner. Really? Oh, no. Well, why not? <sighs> Oh, Mel, I'm sorry, no, I can't. I'm due it a week. Oh, how inconvenient. <laughs> um, I mean, who has had the bad manners to die at such an inappropriate time? No, it's my grandson's rabbit. Oh. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound much, but he, he was very fond of it. Oh, perhaps we'll have luncheon some other time. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'd love that. <laughs> Do you know anywhere that serves jugged her? <laughs> <laughs> See you. <laughs> what on earth are you doing, Emily? Oh, I'm just looking for something. Oh, what? Well, uh, it's that little porcelain figurine I always keep on the mantelpiece. Ah, uh, I'm afraid I have a confession to make. Ooh. Ooh. What? Uh, having destroyed my day's work, I came in here earlier in somewhat of a temper. And, um... And? And uh, I'm afraid I rather carelessly smashed the figurine, uh, waving my arms about. Oh. 
Did you, did you keep the bits? Uh, no, no, they were sharp. No, I, I was worried someone might cut themselves. Well, that's a shame. I hope it was of no great sentimental value. No, although it was of considerable value in monetary terms. Was it? Oh, yes. It was worth at least £200. It was not. Was it? How much? Uh, it was very collectible, is that? Oh, well, I can only say how deeply sorry I am and to give you my word of honour that I will replace or refund you before my departure. And uh, I say to you again, Emily, I am... Deeply, deeply sorry. He's very volatile, isn't he? Oh, it's the artistic temperament, Emily. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about that. He's, he's been non-stop all morning. All oh, right, he'll be ready for his lunch then. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I don't think we should disturb him. Uh, Norris, how is he going to know I'm here? This is a man clearly in the throes of a creative passion. If we just go barging in... He stopped. Well, un unless he's just marshalling his thoughts. Oh, where am I? Oh, it's sometimes like this. Oh, well, of course, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you are. And it's now. It is. <laughs> and it's Audrey, isn't <laughs> it? Oh, I'm so sorry, dear lady. I have uh, been elsewhere and take a little time to return. Oh, well, you must do. It'll be all right now. <laughs> We're having lunch, are we not? <laughs> well, you did say, Mal. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> right, uh, Norris, yeah. uh, get me some paper, will you? Oh, yes, yes, yes of course. Yes. <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, I want you to tell me all about yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all I want is to communicate with my readers. Oh, you still need to live, though, Mel. Do I? Mm. I sometimes wonder. Especially when I've toiled for months and years, only to find that my work is met with cynicism and derision. Oh, really? Oh, dear. Well, I don't think that's very nice. Oh, come on. Have another glass. Which is why I so value your support. Me? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you buy me lunch. Oh, well, yes. I'm lending a sympathetic ear while I bleat on. <laughs> no, I really must think of some way to repay you. Why don't we have another brandy? Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh, come on, I've got work to do. Oh. <laughs> you can have one, though. <laughs> one large brand there. Yeah. Oh, and then could I have the bill, please? Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, it's come to me now. What has? How I can repay your kindness. Oh. What was the name of your late husband? Alf. Alf. Well, I'm going to put him in the book. Oh. He should be my hero. Oh, well, he used to be mine. Well, uh, anyway, if, if not a hero, he'll, he'll be a supporting character who displays courage and fortitude. Oh. Uh, what uh, manner of man was he? Uh, what was his profession? He was a grocer. Grocer. Well, a poetic license may be called for, but he will be in there, you have my word. Oh, have you ever been married, Mel? To my muse. Oh. And to one or two ladies as well. <laughs> but the creative urge finds that the bonds of marriage constrain, and sooner or later, something's got to give. Oh. I can tell you, Audrey, the life of a writer is one of solitude and self-denial. Oh. Are you? Do you have such a thing as a cigar? <laughs> you are a remarkably beautiful woman. Oh, that's... Uh, remarkably. <laughs> so, 
I suggest as we go back to this place where I'm staying, you'll have a little uh, done. Oh, no. The place that you're staying happens to be the home of a very good friend of mine. What, do you want her to join us? No, no! <laughs> no, I, well, no, right. There must be somewhere else. What, what about, uh, oh, this salon of yours? What, uh, does that not have any facilities? Well, it does if you want a perm or your nails painting. There must be somewhere. Here. <laughs> yes, this place. It's an inn. It's an inn. Perhaps if I just said a word with a landlord. No, no, come on. No, don't, oh, no, no, don't right. be silly. He's now. a man just, of the world. Just, He'll no, understand. No, 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 shush, no, no. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Would you look at that sorry sight? The flighty ones always get the man. She ain't got an ounce of shame. If he's got the time to consort with the merry widow, then surely he's got time to squeeze in a meeting of the book club. Oh, if I don't get out there quick, they're going to be at it within the hour. <laughs> Emergency supplies for later. You know, when I'm writing, my blood sugar plummets at the drop of a hat. I'm borderline diabetic. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh. Hey, there's other folk here, you know. Oh, no, no, boys, come on. We don't want any fighting. How well, was dinner? Oh, very satisfying, thank you, Fred. How oh, satisfying? Got good food, fine wine, and a most wonderful companion. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've gotten out with the best intentions towards Mrs. Roberts. I've heard about you writers. Oh, yes, yes, all your. Your bohemian shenanigans. Oh, Fred. Oh, should we let you like? start? Yes. Mm. Tide and time wait for no man. Uh, uh, no, just, just, just a minute, Mel. Just a minute, just a minute. We, uh, we seem to have some interlopers. Uh, uh, Vera, Audrey, Fred. You're not exactly members of the book group, are you? Well, I'm staying. I mean, I might as well. There's not much on telly. Well, that's hardly the attitude. What's your excuse? She's Mel's groupie. Thank your pardon. And Fred Elliott's her groupie. Hey, that'll do. You are most welcome to stay, Fred. No, I, for one, am very keen to hear the opinions of such an erudite fellow. But he's a butcher, for goodness sake. Oh. He's more at home with the smell of blood and sawdust in his nostrils and, and the cry of five pound a scrag end in a meat pie pleased than he is with the cut and thrust of literary debate. Norris. That's almost poetic. Here, what about me? Yes, yes, yes. Salt of the earth. Sit down. Can we get on, please? I hope you'll be treating us to some hard grinding <clears throat> this evening. Well, I thought I might read a passage of oh, Not again. I was hoping we'd look at something more modern, more cutting edge. I don't know why you bother to come if all you can do is moan. Why don't you go home and write one of your columns about dog milk? Well, at least I tackle contemporary issues. Oh, yes, the angry young man who turned into the slightly peeved old man. <laughs> Not so much look back in anger as look back in another bad mood. You, you lied to me. No, never. Creative license, that's all I'm guilty of. You believed in me and I didn't want to let you down. So you've not written a single word of Canary? I have put my heart and soul into writing Canary. <laughs> it looks like it. I know the book I want to write. I've carried it in my head and in my heart for years. But sadly, the publishers, well, they think it's doomed to failure. Not commercial enough. Not everyone's as discerning as you, Boris. Pap! So I want me to write. Pure pap! Well, I, I still don't understand why you had to lie to me. You're a sensitive soul, Norris. I didn't want to burden you with the ugly truth. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely sensitive, I know, but but you and I are friends. Well, at least 
I thought we were. Oh, we are. No, Norris. Brothers in arms. Well, then, you could have unburdened yourself to me. Oh, I see that now. Oh, I am truly sorry that I underestimated you. Oh, it is a shame a, a writer of your calibre should have to prostitute his art like this. I mean, it must be very distressing for you. Well, I have tried to make Canary more commercial, Norris. I truly have. And it's rendered me barren. I have nothing left to give. It must be very difficult. I need a simple, frugal life, and that's allowed me to put aside a modest amount so that I can publish myself, unmolested by the faceless money men who put finance above art. But sadly, there is still a significant shortfall. Oh, dear. So what should I do? Hmm. Norris, what can I do? You must write your vision, Mella. I mean, you must. The world is waiting. I think someone's waiting. Are you going to get that, or shall I do? In my car. <laughs> yes, well, well, now's not a good time. And anyway, why couldn't you give it to him at the book group? Audrey! My dear Audrey, do come in. Oh. Oh. Hi, Ma Oh. Oh, uh. are you all right? Oh, you're looking a little flushed. Yes. The life of a writer is not a happy one. What's the matter? He's got a creative dichotomy. Oh, right. When I sit down to write, I ask myself one simple question. Will the world be a better place for having this piece of literature in it? And as for Canary, the answers are resounding yes, but the publishers think otherwise. It must be true to your artistic vision. I, I, I'm sure you're on the right track, and, and your loyal readers will vindicate you. Norris, there won't be any readers unless somebody will publish his book. Well, that's why he wants to publish himself. Oh, well, doesn't that cost a lot of money? Sadly, yes. I have sold everything that I own to raise funds. Everything. But I will not sell my soul. So I'm afraid I still find myself somewhat short. Mm. Sorry to barge in, Mel, but I... I, I, I've done tea and toast. Did, did you not hear me? My apologies. I, I seem to have lost all relish for the day. Oh, now, now, look, if, if this is about that tape, no. then... No, no, it's the black dog descending. And, uh, you, you, you wouldn't happen to have a, a very small nip of malt whiskey to hand? No, no. Uh, uh, Emily might have some tonic wine. No, no matter. The gloom that afflicts me will yield to neither grape nor grain. Look, 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 this'll cheer you up. Uh, Emily's gone hospital visiting. I mean, I, I know the sight of her in a pinny must send the muse scurrying for cover, but now you've got a whole day of peace and quiet just to write. To stretch my creative sinews on the rack of self-delusion. Oh, don't say that, Mel. Look, I, I'm sure you'd feel better if you just try and write something. Try? Try it, Norris. Have you ever observed the salmon? It struggles its way upstream, and then the price for its efforts is death. Man, at least it spawns. I'm barren. Look, look, we we all go through a rocky patch. A, a few years back, I, I thought I was done for. I mean, I, I'd lost my job, and uh, my marriage was finished. And but you see, then Rita threw me a lifeline, and. Everything changed. Oh, if I could do that for, for someone as talented as yourself, well, I, oh, I'd really feel I'd achieved something. Mm, Norris. If only loyalty were the currents of this vulgar, money-obsessed world. But as it is, my one last hope lies with the generosity of others who may perhaps offer assistance to contribute to the costs of publishing my book. 
That's the spirit. You see, you will finish this book. Now, are you coming for your breakfast? May I have it on a tray? Of course. And perhaps a scrape of the widow's damson preserve. Right. <clears throat> used to call it animal magnetism. Touch of the Richard Burtons. Speak of the devil. Oh. Do you think so, Rita? Yeah, well, Mel certainly has a way about him. <laughs> Quite a persuasive way, actually. Do you fancy being the next Liz Taylor? Oh. <laughs> Bit long in the tooth for schoolgirl swooning. Oh, good gracious, I wasn't swooning. He's seeking inspiration, not trawling the cobbles for a concubine. Well, his charm certainly hasn't rubbed off on you, has it? Female company is a distraction he doesn't need, and he's getting all the creative support he requires from me. Yes. Well, from what he told me, it's not creative support that he wants. It's a few bob to get his book published. Mm. You know, Rita, I'd chip in myself if I thought it would help. I, I think you're mistaking this man of letters for some sort of gigolo. Oh. Norris! I said chip in, Norris, not make him a kept man. Phew, talk about possessive. Well, uh, can't he come up with the money himself? I mean, he's written a bestseller. Oh, that was years ago, Rita. I mean, you don't catch John Grisham trimming his little shirt cuffs with nail scissors. No. And, you know, there's something that almost breaks my heart when I see a man of his age who hasn't set himself up in life. Well, how much does something like this cost? Yes. Come on, Mr Know-it-all. Well, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but... Now, now I think on... How many are there of us in, in the book group? I mean, if we all pitched in... Maybe we'll be getting somewhere. Oh, thank you. And if we all work with each other, maybe we can help him out. Yeah, yeah, but don't let's use words like help him out, because that smacks of a, a begging bowl, and he's a very proud man, is Mel. Oh, you mustn't go out there, Mel. <coughs> Norris. There's a gunman at large. I've informed my police contacts. Just, just give it five minutes for the coast to clear, and you... What? What, what, what have we got all your bags together for? Now, please don't make this any more difficult for me than it is. Yeah, you're not leaving. You and Mrs Bishop have been extremely kind. But, but you don't need to go. I, I've, I've spoken to Audrey. But it's, it is for her that I do this, as much as for myself. I cannot allow her to be drawn moth-like to the flame of ruined <laughs> promise. But you don't understand. I'm bringing you fresh but hope. Please, would you just... Let me drift away, much as Eskimos lash themselves to the icebergs when they become a burden to those around them. But that's it. You're not a burden. Norris, if I can achieve nothing, please let me beat an honourable retreat. But I think I can get the members of the book group to club together and raise enough money to get your book published. Really? Yes. You'll be back on the shelves where you belong. <laughs> but, but excuse me now, because I, I must go and inform members of the watch. Truly a gentleman and a scholar, Norris. <laughs> oh, Norris, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Right. <laughs> Finding the extraordinary, unearthing the dangerous and unusual beneath the quotidian and mundane. That is the blessing and the curse of every professional writer. He's a shop assistant. Not for much longer. Oh, I, I, I've uh, returned to my novel. I, I, I've started again from scratch. <laughs> Not already. We only spoke of it yesterday. I couldn't help myself, Mel. Throw a thesaurus into the air at random, Rita. It'll hit someone who'll tell you they've got a book inside them, but how many actually sit down to the task? Well, I, I, I'm only on page three. <laughs> oh, wonder I couldn't find a pencil this morning. Well, that's what I came for. You know. A pencil, by the way. Pencil? It, 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 it's a, a thriller set in the world of stationery. Very original. I like it. <laughs> 20 pence, please, Mel. Uh, yes, I shall use this very pencil 
to scribble notes, suggestions, and words of encouragement in your first draft. <laughs> How much did you say it was again? Oh, that, that's all right. I'll say to that. Oh, and uh, a, a packet of cigars. Oh. Well, a bit. Oh, thank you. Nice. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, and, and don't worry, I'm arranging a, a, a extraordinary general meeting of the book club tonight. Excellent. So we'll be discussing your novel, of course. Oh, no, no. No, no. It, it's a fundraiser to, hmm? to get the money together to publish your book. Remember, you know, we talked about it last night. Well, I suppose we could float it as an idea, but, you know, I'd much rather hear some of your manuscript, <laughs> Norris. Alpha. Uh, <laughs> passion. You know, he's so self-effacing. If it was left to him, he'd never get this book published, here. Or pay for a packet of cigars. In a manner which uh, many women found almost irresistible. There's more to paper clips than you might think, he said, uh, rakishly. Uh, and, and, and that's as far as I've got. Do you know that's whew, breathtaking, uh, Norris? Uh, what an astonishing debut. Absolutely astonishing. Oh, don't be so polite, Mel. We're not here to listen to that claptrap. Exactly. We're here to talk about getting your book published, Mel. Uh, excuse me, I only took the floor at Mel's insistence. No, I didn't... Uh, don't let me dictate the agenda any longer. Uh, I won't say another word. And uh, now that I've heard your magnum opus, <laughs> Mr Chairman, Alpha, <laughs> I'm content. Now, please continue. Right. Well, uh, as you know, uh, due to the short-sightedness of the publishing industry, Mel's uh, wonderful... Wonderful new novel, The Canaries' Last Song, is yet to see the light of day. And, and, and we thought... Oh, it would... oh, Norris. I can't take any credit for this. <laughs> right. Well, I thought... I mean, what's to stop us, as a book group, publishing it ourselves? I mean, for, for a small initial outlay, we, we could stake our place in, in literary history and and make a profit at the same time. How small an initial outlay? How big a profit? But none of us knows anything about publishing. Well, but, uh, according to Mel, that for £2,000 we can do a first print run of, of uh, 300 hardback books. Yes, I, I, I've done some research, but I, I, I couldn't ask you to take that kind of risk. Oh, well, where's the risk? If we sell each book for £10, we make a profit of a 1000 And Mel's an established author. Yeah, we, we, we could stock it in the cabin. We're news agents, not booksellers. Uh, hang on before you all get carried away. Vanity publishing schemes like this are notoriously bad for making any money at all. It's not vanity publishing. It's self-publishing, although Ken is right to be concerned. Sounds like vanity publishing to me. Vanity, Ken? Vanity. A private firm charges an eager author a large sum to print a handful of books that the company have no incentive to market or sell. Well, I respect a man who has no truck with vanity, and you've only got to take one look at Ken to realise that he's a stranger to his bathroom mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ken is absolutely right. Uh, are any of you familiar with uh, Schott's miscellany? Oh, I, I own a copy, actually. I thought you might. Now, Roy can probably tell you that... Ben Schott printed the first 60 copies of his book, Schott's Miscellany, with his own money. Correct? I, I believe so, yes. And uh, <coughs> how many copies have been sold now, Roy? Oh, millions. Uh, it was top of the bestsellers list for, for months. Mm. But uh, that's not the point. No, the point is that Ben Schott was probably motivated by nothing more than pure, unadulterated vanity. And I simply cannot allow you, good and kind and supportive people, to risk your hard-earned money. Yes, but it's only £200 each. No, I won't allow you to risk a single penny to satisfy my foolish, vainglorious dream. Uh, but it would be an investment, really. No, Emily, conscience. You know, as I look at you all, I don't see shot. I see... A tool. I see a collection of dunces. A confederacy. You what? A confederacy of dunces. Don Kennedy O'Toole, I think that's the book you're referring to. Oh, you finished a sentence with a preposition there, Ken, but uh, never mind. No, uh, Ken is right. Again. And uh, the point of um, 
O'Toole's wonderful comic masterpiece is that it exists. It is on the shelf, but it was not published during his lifetime. And the constant rejection led to deep depression. And inevitably, and tragically, he took his own life. But finally, his book was published after his death. And I may not be here to see it, but I know my canary will sing. And that's my consolation. That's, that's all I need. Hard grinding must give you some satisfaction, Mel. That'll always be on the shelves. Well, I'm putting 200 in. Me too. And me. Oh, that, that, that's more like it. And I'll buy Kenneth's share and all. Hey, you're not getting two shares. We'll split his share up equally if we have to. Let's have a, a show of hands. All those in favour of publishing Mel's book. Hmm? <laughs> all right, Norris, this first round's on me. Oh, no, 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 Mel. I couldn't allow you to do that. Uh, allow me, please. I insist. <laughs> right. Uh, would, uh, would you just excuse me for a minute, please? All right. So, <laughs> ladies, uh, what are we going to drink to celebrate the birth of our new adventure? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Friends and investors, patrons of the arts, I give you the Canary's last song. Oh, oh my my last song! song. <laughs> Are you sure this isn't just sour grapes? I don't trust him, Rita. OK, he knows how to cadge your freebie. But aren't all writers like that? I'm going to find out the truth about Mel Hotride. It is the last thing I do. <laughs> I will be forever grateful to you and your friends. Really, there's no need. There is every need. Do you know? What you're doing? Do you know what you saved me from? Uh, I don't know. Cuban rebel girls. Hey, eh? Errol Flynn's final film, oh. Hollywood's greatest swashbuckler, took his final bow in a miserable B movie. Mm. What is Chevalier? The epitome of Gallic sophistication and savoir faire. His valedictory performance: monkeys go home. <laughs> Tailored chimpanzees trained to pick olives. Oh, <laughs> it's hardly Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice to say, no one remembers it well. Mm. No, they, there are a few more pitiful sights than a great artist dancing for pennies in the twilight of his career, and you saved me from that. My final work will be my monument. Oh, yeah, but don't, don't say your final work. Well, I fear so. Yes, like the mighty salmon at the end of its epic journey, I have but one spasm of genuine creativity within me before I die. What about hard grinding? I mean, that was what... That's mere foreplay. Mm. Uh, when I go upstream to meet our publisher, I will consummate my genius, if I may be so immodest. Oh, you may, you may. Um, I, sh I shall miss our little chat. Oh. I rarely get the chance to rehearse the battle between narrow and broad gauge railways in early Victorian Britain. Indeed. And on those occasional evenings when sleep proves elusive, I'll recall our tete a tetes with unalloyed gratitude. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, breakfast on its way. Oh, what? Uh, yes, uh, coming up, yes. <laughs> oh, what a fitting feast for my final repast here, Roy. I thank you. I hope you will come back sometime. Well, pardon me, we'll never leave. Your generosity has burnt on my heart. Yes, a lot of punters leave here with heartburn. Do you really have to leave tonight? I've been at your breast too long, Norris, and I'm not one to take advantage. Thank you. <laughs> Besides, tomorrow I have to meet Lionel Hipkiss. Who? Lionel Hipkiss, our publisher. Mm. Ah, he's highly respected. Oh, uh, by the way, it's important that everyone makes out their checks to him. That's Hipkiss with just one S. Will you spread the word before tomorrow? That's a good chap. Mm. <laughs> Steady on, Mel. We, we, we've got the meeting later. Well, indeed, but if I'm going to read tonight, my creativity requires oiling. Yes, well, well, don't, well, don't you think it's oiled enough for now? You know, tonight, 
I'm going to give you a recital you'll never forget. I think my patrons deserve nothing less than my chef d'oeuvre. Uh, oeuvre? Oh, that, that's an egg, isn't it? Uh, not quite, Norris. No, in this case, it's a bird. The canary's last song. Ah. Yes, indeed, gentlemen. This evening, I'm going to shovel fresh hutch right into your ears, and if that doesn't deserve a drink... Will my character be in it? Um, yes, perhaps, but, I, you know, I'm torn between a variety of extracts. A um, little libation might uh, help clarify my decision. Look, could you all have your checks ready, please? Oh, oh. Right, all right, keep your hair... Oh, happen I know how you lost it now. There you go, made out to Lionel Hipkiss 1S, like yourself. Oh, thank you, Audrey. Uh, that goodness senility's not catching. I'll still have my marbles in my satchel long after you've gone gaga. Here. Well, now, Blanche, you can officially say you are a patron of the arts. Hardly. You've made this out to Lionel Blair. I think he's got enough money, don't you? Oh, give it to you. Oh, I know what it was. I was watching Tony Blair on the news. Now make out another one. Now win your own time. Is, uh, is cash acceptable? Oh, eminently. It feels so... so vulgar, so cheap to take this from you when I know how hard... Well, it's, it's an investment. Yeah. Uh, there is 400 there, if you, if you want to count it. Oh, no, 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 I trust you. Well... Yeah. Bless you, Roy, bless you. I've got all the checks in. Ah, signed, sealed and dated. Yes, sir. Perhaps if I might just say a few words. Oh. Right. I came to this street a poor stranger. But I leave tonight richer than I could ever have imagined. In three short weeks, <coughs> you've clasped me to your bosom, taken me in. And truth to tell, I've taken you in too. Right here. I can't think how to thank you enough. And all I can do is offer you the gift of my gift. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Canary's last song. Oh, Fred Elliott left the tiny pit community a mere boy, his father's anger ringing in his ears, his mother's tears staining his shoulder, his own ambition burning in his belly. But he'd returned a man, his broad chest straining the buttons of his calico shirt, the manly bulge of his toned thighs tugging at his tweed breeches. He'd been called home by a siren schoolboy song. Do you hear the canary singing his final song? Do you hear the canary? He's been down yon pit too long. Do you hear the canary above the widow's cry? Do you hear the canary? He knows it's time to die. Oh, I'm filling up. Oh, shush. The rhyme always filled Fred with foreboding as a lad, but now this fear <coughs> was lent a terrible weight by the crisp mining engineer's diploma sheathed in the pigskin document wallet lodged under his ample Oh. Excuse me, I thought Fred were a miner. Well, miner, mining engineer, minor discrepancy. <laughs> no, think of it as a promotion. Any more questions? I have one or two. Well, if it isn't the nitwit in nitwear, I'm afraid I started without you. I've heard more than enough. Yes, so, well, I apologise if I uh, overtaxed you. Understanding is... Um, so important for literary appreciation. Mm. I understand you better than you think. And I haven't come here to praise you. I'm on neighbourhood watch business. Oh, he shouldn't be let out on his own these days. 
This is a book group meeting. Neighborhood Watch next week, okay? On this occasion, the two overlap. I'm so sorry, everybody. I always feel so drained after reading, so I, I need a little line down. Stay where you are, Lionel. Lionel, <laughs> you're right. He has got Lionel to Lionel Hipkiss, to give him his full name. That's right, isn't it? He didn't write hard grinding. Oh, he does enjoy that dubious distinction. Mel Hutchright was a pseudonym that he used during a uh, mercifully brief writing career. He said that Lionel Hipkiss was a publisher. We, we wrote out our checks to Lionel Hipkiss. Yes, I didn't want to confuse you. I just thought it'd be simply... And he didn't want to confuse the King's Lynn readers, the Deal and Dover Literary Society and the Solihull Book Club. They invested, like you, that no book ever saw the light of day. From what I've discovered, our friend here has been living off the kindness of strangers for years, including Her Majesty. Con artist. And far more adept than he ever was as a writer. He's made a good living out of this scam. That's why your publisher and your agent cut you off. To think that I had you in my home. And I let you... Take me out to dinner. All them double brandies, gratis. All those free breakfasts. I haven't contacted the police. He deceived you, not me. You can decide his fate. Look, way before you condemn me, would you just ask yourselves what harm I've really done? Didn't you enjoy our outings, Audrey? Didn't that make you feel special, Fred? And you thought you were going to be immortalised? And Roy, you said yourself, you love the opportunity to share your railway stories. But I spent the whole afternoon listening to you go on about the dull art. It's a um, mallard, actually, but, yeah, point, point taken. Well, whatever. Uh, Norris. I know I've let you down. But if I inspired you to let loose your creativity... And that's the biggest crime of all. <laughs> Fact is, you were going to waltz out of that door with our money. Talking of which... Well, we can't let you do this again. Go on, Roy. Well, all right. But you know a case like this will attract some uh, local publicity and I could paint some... Pretty unpleasant caricatures, the vain pub landlord, the anorak cafe owner, the lonely crimper, so easily flattered, and not forgetting the chattering crone and the improbably coiffured newsagent and her Walter Mitty assistant scurrying back to the burnt offerings from Eleanor Rigby's kitchen. And at the head of this sorry band, Billy Lyre himself, Lying every time he says to himself that he made the right choices. Village intellectual and village idiot rolled into one. And, uh, oh, it could make some really unpleasant reading, couldn't it, this? And it's all anathema to me, you just know, come. because if you just, don't... Oh, just well, get out! Oh, yes. Oh. Sling your oh. Thank you. Thank you. Oh! Here's the pawn ticket for Ellen's Boston figure. I'm sorry, but once a storyteller, always a storyteller. Good luck with your book. Just, just go. Adieu, Norris. Alpha. <laughs> 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 